Is there a halachic issue to have a dog or cat at home? For beginners, having a dangerous or even a scary dog in your house could be a problem. Dangerous because you're not supposed to have any thing that threatens people, something that makes a danger for yourself, for your surroundings, for your family. So that's for beginners. If it's a scary dog, something that could be a threat, besides it being dangerous, it's a little bit of a contradiction to the idea and the concept of a Jewish home. A Jewish home should always be welcoming, should always be open for other people. And having a dangerous dog that's a threat or even a scary element, scaring people from coming, as I said, is a little bit of a contradiction to this idea of an open home. That's for beginners. However, if we know that we need the dog for security purposes, we know that the dog could really keep away some people that may be a threat, then you could have a dog in your backyard as a protection, as security. Then you could have a dog. You have to make sure that the dog should be tied during the day and you should be able to let it go and protect you and your house and your family whenever it has to be protected. Regarding halacha, we have a few objective halachic issues, and then we have a deeper concept. Let's start with the halachic issues. We know that just like you have to be kind to your fellow friend, to a human being, to a fellow Jew, you also must be kind to an animal. Being cruel to an animal, according to most opinions, is an Isidar Isa of Tsar Balichaim. And therefore, if you decide on having a pet in your house, you have to be kind to this pet. Second thing is, we know that whenever there is a pet in the house, you must feed your pet before even sitting down for your own meal. The Pasuk says, The Pasuk says, I will give food to your animals and only then, Our sages, the Chazal, learned from this, that before sitting down to eat, you must support and you must give food to your pets. The third halachic issue is carrying this pet on Shabbos. Carrying a pet on Shabbos, whether it's a cat or a dog, is muktza. You're not supposed to carry pets on Shabbos. You're able to hold the strap and keep it, you know, help, take it on a walk, but you should not be actually carrying it and holding it. It's called muktza. It's called tiltul on Shabbos. Then there's a deeper concept. The deeper concept is we know that a person is influenced by his surroundings. That's why a person should always surround themselves, should always surround themselves with positive elements, with pure elements, with kosher elements. And the question is, when somebody chooses and decides on raising a pet that's not tahir, not pure, and not kosher, is that really the influence that I want to have on myself, on my children, on my children's neshamas, being surrounded by a dog, by a cat, by an unkosher pet? It's a question someone should ask himself. If it's for therapy... For sure, that's not a question because it, this animal is helping the human being become whatever it becomes. If it's a dog, for someone that's blind, needs a dog for help, for sure, that's not the question. The question is, just someone has some free time. Is this the time that I would like my children to spend with an animal, with an unkosher animal? That's a question that someone should ask themselves, should ask their mashpia, should ask their of. That's regarding that. Speaking about that, we all know that there is from the Rebbe, more than once, actually many times, that the Rebbe speaks about the fact that whenever you have a teacher, whenever you have a director, whenever you have an educational event, you should really let the children play only with elements that are kosher and tar, once again, because of the influence on the neshama. That's why we try to have only games that are kosher animals, 
We should try to surround our children with pictures of kosher animals, with kosher and pure elements, because these things really have an effect on the child, on the behavior, and on our neshamas. Nevertheless, if someone wants to teach their children, someone wants to take them to the zoo to show them how Hashem created such a great world, someone wants to show them Noach's teva, the ark, and he wants to show them the different animals that are there, for sure, then there's no problem showing them kosher animals and unkosher animals. Fact is, that everyone's told the teacher that even Moshe Rabbeinu, that was the greatest educator, when he wanted to teach the Jewish people about kosher foods, about kosher animals, Parsha Shmini, it says, This is the animal you should be eating, and this is the animal you shouldn't be eating. So Rashi brings down that Moshe Rabbeinu showed them every one of these animals. Moshe presented to them what is a kosher animal, what's not a kosher animal. If it's an educational experience, there's no problem. But being surrounded by these things, playing with these things, making these things part of our life, a dog, a cat, as we were saying before, if not for therapy, if not for a real good reason, a person should really ask themselves, their mashpia, their rabbi, is this something that I would like to expose myself, my children, my surroundings with these non-kosher animals?